Jeremiah 15, 16 say, When your words came, I ate them. They were my joy and my heart's delight. For I bear your name, O Lord God Almighty. I believe you will take in the word of God that you will hear in this teaching and you will practice what you learn. See you in the teaching. Let us pray together. Father, we thank you so much, Lord, that we can hear your word and we understand how to walk uprightly and righteously so that we can fulfill your promise, Lord. You are the faithful God. You promise us in the Bible when we loved you, we obey your commands, we walk in the truth, we shall be blessed and we shall be the blessing to the nations. Please, Lord, your Holy Spirit, speak to us. Shine the light from heaven into our spirit. We open our spiritual ears to hear what you say. We ask you to open our spiritual eyes to see the light of God. And we will receive the revelation and understanding. Lord, help us by the grace of the Holy Spirit that we will not be just the hearers of the word, but we shall be doers of the word. Thank you so much, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. I'm still in the series called Receiving God's Best. This might be lesson uh, number 12 or something like that. So please listen to the whole series. And I would like to encourage you to listen many times because sometimes you listen the first time you get 5%. The second time you get 10% out of the message. So it's good to listen again and again. You can gain more knowledge and revelation and understanding. In the last session, we talked about how we can receive God's best. Our God is a God of principle and law. He gives us the principle. He gives us laws. And we cannot just throw everything to God and say, God, you do your part. I'm not going to do anything. I'm going to sit around doing nothing. We need to do our part. Actually, like salvation, we need to do our part in salvation by repenting and believing in Jesus. Salvation will not just come automatically. We need to do our part by changing our mind and obeying God and believing in Jesus and walking with Jesus in obedience. That salvation will come, that action. Last time we learned that in order to receive God's best, we need to sow the right kind of seed. You reap what you sow. If you sow bad things, you're going to reap bad things and you cannot blame God at all. You reap what you sow. You can sow your words, sow your thoughts, your attitudes, your motive, your actions, sow your materials and finances and your strength. You can sow. And last time we learned that one thing that we need to sow our spirit and our life into, what if we invest basically, what I try to say, we invest into and we're gonna get the dividends. We're gonna get a good return. We need to sow our time, life, and energy into the Word of God. Last time we learned that when we are serious about the Word, the Word of God become the standard of our life, become the authority of our life. We're gonna get courage and we get faith. Today I would like to talk about two more things. When you put God's words first, and you take serious about the word of God. Two more things. Number one, vision. You're going to get the vision. You need to understand if you put the stethoscope on the heart of God and you listen to his heartbeat, he will say, I loved you. I want to give you the best. I want to bless you. And you need to find out how to get that best from God. And lately, I learned from God that one of the ways to get God's best is to live according to God's purposes or the vision God gave to us. God gave the dream to King David, to Moses, gave the dream to, or the vision to Abraham, to Joseph. If you study the Bible carefully, all the believers from the Old Testament to the New Testament, they all have the purpose of God in their life. David, his life purpose is to become the king and the giant killer. And he wrote the book of Psalms. He has a purpose from God in his life. Moses, the purpose of God in his life to take the Israelite out of Egypt to be 
free from slavery. But for Joshua, the purpose of God for his life is to take the children of Israel into the promised land. So every one of us has purpose of God. And when we study the Bible, we will find God's purpose for our life. And the purpose can be divided into three kinds. Number one, general purpose for the world and for every believer. Number two, specific purpose for yourself. What God wants you to do. You are not a cookie cutter production. You are unique. God has a specific purpose for you. God calls you. He gives you the purpose. You need to find out what God wants you to do in this life and stick to it to the end. And when you step into the purpose of God, He shall give you the best. He shall take care of you, open the right door for you. In Acts chapter 13, verse 36, I like this scripture, talking about King David. King David got the best, even though King David makes some mistake off and on in his life. One mistake is bad one, but he still lived according to God's purpose. In Acts chapter 13, verse 36, for David, after he had served God's will and purpose and counsel in his own generation, fell asleep in death and was buried among his forefathers. You notice the scripture say, David, at the time of his death, he has fulfilled God's will and purpose and counsel in his generation. I hope that you can feel that way on the deathbed, last day of your life that, oh God, I have fulfilled your plan and purpose for me. I have done the best, I have run my race with faith, and I get to the finish line. This is important, you need to find God's purpose for your life and accomplish God's plan. You must know the plan of God for your life. And how can you find the plan of God in your life? Definitely, you need to spend time with Him. You need to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. You need to read the Bible, study the Word of God. You know the plan and purpose of God by fellowshipping, praying, spending time with God, reading the Word, studying the Word of God, listen to the good teaching, and be filled and be led by the Holy Spirit. And the Lord promises that He's going to give us the best no matter what happens when we live according to His purpose. In fact, lately God just showed this uh, truth to me. In the past, I mentioned that we live by in love, we live by faith, we live by the fear of God, and by the leading of the Holy Spirit. Now I add one more. We need to live according to His purpose. All of us need to find our own calling and purpose. Romans chapter 8, verse 28, this is the promise of God. And we know, I like this scripture, we know that all things, including bad things, all things work together. God work behind the scene. God say bad things happen to us, some betrayal, some cheating, or some people gossip about us and try to destroy us. All the bad things, he see it. He see the good things too. All these things, God work behind the scene together for good for good but the bible did not say for good for everybody only to some people for good to those who love god Amen. i remind the discipleship group on wednesday night that every day you wake up you should confess and make a decision i love jesus i make a decision to love god you make decisions every day. To those who love God and to those who are the called according to His purposes. In other words, those who love God and those who live according to the calling and the purpose that God has for His life. We need to find the purpose of God in our life. And what kind of purpose God has for us? Definitely not bad purpose, not evil purpose. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. The Bible says, For I know the plans I have for you. This is what God said to us. I know, God knows the plan He has for me. Say the Lord, they are plans for good and not for disaster. 
to give you a future and a hope. God's purpose and plan for each and every one of us is for good, for hope, for good future. So we should find that purpose. How we can find the purpose by reading the scripture. I give you example. Every believer on earth, every believer, no exception, no matter what church you go to, no matter how old you are in the in Christ or how long have you been a Christian, God has a big picture purpose for every believer and for the world. Okay, I read the scripture to you. I find this in the scripture. What is the big picture purpose for every person on earth and every Christian? Matthew chapter 28 verses 19 to 20. Go, therefore, make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. So God's big purpose for every Christian to do is to bring people into Christ, get them saved out of the kingdom of darkness, and enjoy the kingdom of light. And not only that, help them to grow spiritually to become disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. So every Christian should get involved. I remember when I first moved to America, we bought a house in North Seattle area. At that time, I was not a pastor. I was still busy with my residency training program. But when we bought the house, we say, God, we're going to live for the gospel. We're going to live for the Great Commission. So I pray, please use this house to preach the gospel, to save soul, and to help people. And at that time, my salary was $1,300 a month. Very small, but I was a student. But we still opened our home, invited at that time because I was so new in America, I invited Thai students. I could not speak English well. So the only group of people I can reach out to was, were Thai students. So I invite Thai students come, pass it cook, feed them. After they ate good food, uh, can I share with you something? So I share the gospel. Amen. They eat free food, they need to hear. So we share the gospel, and one of the students that got saved was Thai, who's sitting here. She was one of them who got saved in that generation. And after that, we trained them. We discipled them. Many of them has gone back to Thailand and become pastor now. Many of them become pastor and leaders in the church. So I was not a pastor, but I opened my home. I used my money. I used my gasoline to expand the kingdom and to make disciples. Not only that, Matthew 16, verse 18. Now I say to you that you are Peter, which means rock. And upon this rock, I will build my church and all the powers of hell will not conquer it. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 10. God's purpose in all this was. Okay, God's purpose, preach the gospel, save soul, make disciples, get people saved and help them to grow spiritually. But not only that, to build his church. God's purpose in all this was to use the church to display his wisdom in its rich variety to all the unseen rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. So when I know this general big purpose of God, okay, God, before I bought the house in Belleville, I moved to Belleville, I said, God, I'm going to find a house that people can come easily to have Bible study with me. And I can throw a big party so that I can save soul. And I can use my house to build the church. Actually, the first meeting for New Hope International Church happened in the basement of my house in North Seattle. The room fit about 10 people. And I, I did not have money at that time. I was a student. So I get a tape, small table, have a chair, flip the chair like this, and put the cloth on to be my pulpit. And I put the paper on there, and the first preaching I preach, I read my sermon. I read every sentence. I don't know how to preach at that time. I just read it. Everyone look at me. He is reading his sermon. <laughs> He's not preaching. So I did my best. I used my house to build the church. So that is a purpose of God in general, but specifically for each and every one of you. For every Christian, his purpose is that you will grow spiritually to become like Jesus Christ. Amen. That is a 
general purpose for each individual Christian. But not only that, God has a purpose for all of you. You need to find that out so that Romans chapter 8, 28 shall be fulfilled. All things will work together for those who love God and those who live according to his purpose. Some of you may be called, the purpose is to be a part of worship team. Some of you, the calling for your life may be a part of social media team. Some of you may be help set a party, cook and clean up. Some of you may be helping in a mission. Go with Pastor La and Pastor Da and help in a mission. Some of you may get involved in the uh, financial uh, management in the church. Some of you may look after the building. Whatever God purpose for your life, some of you may be called to take care of children, young adult, youth, whatever. You need to find the purpose of God in your life. And how can you find it? You need to spend time with God, read the word of God. How can you know your gift if you don't know what are the spiritual gifts? And how can you know what are the spiritual gifts? Study the word. Then you know what gifts you have. How can you know? You need to know the word of God. And this is God's word is all about. His plan for you shall be revealed when you know his word. You need to know the word, the knowledge of his plan. When you know the plan of God for your life, your life, everyone point to your, yourself, mm, the plan of God for me. Okay, you have the plan of God for yourself. When you know that, you start to dictate your future. Why? Because if you don't know anything, you just sit around watching TV and eat and get sick because you don't know what to do. But when you have the plan clear, this is my direction, I'm gonna run that way. You start to work. You start to do something about it. Your word will be changed. Your action shall be changed. And that will dictate your future, whether you get God's best or not. When we talk about God's plan, I like uh, the architect thinking. You know, as an architect, you talk to the person who want to build the building or the house first, who, who own the building. Okay, I want to build a house here. The architect will ask the owner of the land that, oh, what do you want to see? What do you want to see? And the architect will write the plan in the computer or the paper, whatever they do, and the plan come out clear, bedroom here, how many restroom, how big the yard is, we call blueprint, blueprint. Before you get permission to build a house, you, get to, you need to have the blueprint or the plan. Show it to the city, city of Kirkland, city of Bellevue, and get approval. The Bible is the blueprint of God. He is the architect, but not just only architect. He is a designer for your life. He created you to be so unique, unique in your experiences, educations, personality, the gifts, spiritual gift, talents, and heart passion. You are unique. He knows you better than you know yourself. And he has a specific plan for you. So he write the blueprint that is the Bible for you. And when you look at the blueprint, you start to have the imagination. Oh, it looked like this, imagination. The word imagination comes from the word uh, image. You have the image of what you want to do. So when you read the Bible, study the Bible, meditate on the word, listen to good teaching, eventually the imagination, the vision, the think, the image start to become clearer and clearer in your mind what the purpose of God in your life is. If you don't study the Bible, you will not find out the purpose of God. Your vision become very clear. I would like to read from Genesis chapter 11 verse 6. This scripture speak about humanity here. At that generation, the people wanted to build a tower of Babel. So they, write, they wrote the blueprint and they planned to build a tower up to heaven. They, were, they wanted to challenge God. And look at what God say here. Genesis chapter 11 verse 6 in the Amplified Bible. And the Lord said, Behold, there are 
one people and they have all one language. And this is only the beginning of what they will do. And now, nothing they have imagined. Everyone say imagine. Yeah. Everyone say image. Yeah. They can do will be impossible for them. In King James Version say, and the Lord said, behold, all the people is one and they have all one language and this they begin to do and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. As Christians, we need to have that imagination. What God want me to do? For me, I want to become like Jesus. For me, it's clear. God's calling for me is to be a pastor and teacher and take care of God's people, clear. The imagination in my heart, one day when I died at 124 years old, uh, 140 years old, at that day, I'm still strong like Caleb and like Moses. I'm still vigorous, but God took me away. Take me away on that day. And I know I have done God's purpose for my life. I know and I know. And God say, if I have that imagination, according to the Bible, nothing can stop me. God gonna provide right people for me, finances, wisdom, strength, income, anything to get the job done. That's what happened to Joseph, happened to King David, to Moses, to Abraham, to Paul. They have the purpose in their life and God fulfilled the purpose. So when you study the Bible, your image will become clearer about God's purpose for you. Your vision become clearer. Oh, God's purpose for me is to be healthy, to be prosperous, to be victorious, to have long life. Can we show that list of uh, words that I put in there? I have divine health, prosperity, victory, breakthroughs, long life, anointing, power, fruitfulness, and answer prayer. That is the, in the Bible. All this belong to me. I see it. I have that vision. I see, wow, divine health is mine. So I still believe that I'm gonna get old one day. I'm not old yet. Only half of my life now. If I live 140 years. I'm not old yet, but when I get older, I'm still strong. I'm going to be prosperous. I'm going to have victory. Amen. Breakthroughs belong to me. Yes. Long life belong to me. Anointing, power, fruitfulness. And God will answer my prayer. If you can conceive this, you can receive it. Let me repeat one more time. If you can conceive it, how you can conceive it, you need to read the Bible. Listen to the teaching. And your future is only limited by your imagination. If your imagination is very evil, oh, I'm gonna die young. I will be poor, broke forever. I'm gonna have fail, failure in my life. Is, if that your imagination, you're gonna get it. You get what you have faith and imagination about. It will go with the direction. This is why the Bible says in the book of Proverbs, chapter 23, verse seven, for as he thinks in his heart, so is he. If your imagination is, I'm gonna die young, I will be broke, I will be a failure, my life will not go anywhere, oh, I just live to waste oxygen in the air. If you think that way, you're gonna be that way. If you think, I'm prosperous, I am fruitful. I'm gonna do the things of God in this generation. I know the purpose of God in my life. You're gonna be that way. As you think. How can you have the right thinking? Study the Bible. Read the Bible. Find out the purpose of God in your life. When you study the Bible, show the next one, the sentence that I wrote. When you get God's word, it will lead you, actually in the paper, I put the arrow. From God's word, it will lead you to positive thoughts. And positive thoughts, arrow, right imagination. Then arrow, after you have the right imagination, you're gonna have God's given vision for yourself. Then, after that arrow, continue, expectation. When you have the vision, 
Imagination, you have expectation. When you get the expectation, yes, this is what God called me to do, the purpose of God in my life personally and as a whole. Then next arrow to go to direction in your life, what you're going to do with your life. And path, what path you're going to take. And you get the target. You see the target, the finish line. And the target is God's best. Because God said, my plan for you is for the future and the good hope and for life, not for death. Is it clear? God's word leads you to positive thoughts, leads you to right imagination, lead to God's given vision for your life, lead to expectation, and then direction and path. Which path you're going to choose? You choose this one or you're going to choose this one? Path. And next, you're going to have the target. What's going to happen to you eventually in your life? That vision directs you. How can we get all this? Psalm chapter 119, verse 105, in King James Version say, Thy word, the Bible, is a lamb unto my feet, and a light unto my path. The word of God gives us clear thoughts, good thoughts, purposes, direction, vision, like a blueprint. And it gives us the light to walk in that path, to go to the top plan of God. You need to know the word. I pray that my church members will find the purpose of God in your life, every one of you. You will not just live day by day just for the paycheck, for a nice car, for a nice house, go home, cook, eat, go to bed, wake up, go to work, quarrel with the boss a little bit, and your co-worker gossip about you a little bit, and you come home and sad and could not sleep, and, and go to bed, wash your dishes, and go home, and go to work next morning, and every day go by like this, and no purpose, just work for the paycheck, and wait to die one day. I hope that is not your life. I hope you are fine. You participate in the big purpose of God that is to save soul and make disciples and build the church. And you yourself grow spiritually and you become the person who shall run, walk in the specific purpose of God for your own life. And on the last day, just like God recorded about King David. Before he died, he fulfilled the plan and purpose of God in his life. He did not waste his life away. Psalm 119 verse 105 in the message translation, by your words, I can see where I am going. By God's word, you will see where you are going. You will not get lost. If you follow the purpose of God, what happened? You will get to the place where you cannot even imagine. You're going to get to the things that you cannot even thought about. Wow. Oh, God opened this door for me. God brought these people to me. You, you just like, your life is so excited all the time. Woo. You keep running with his plan and his direction. Things going to happen and you, you're so fulfilled. You know, if you just go to work for money, you're going to be bored. But if you go to work, you know God put you there for his purpose. You're going to be fulfilled. When I was a doctor, neurosurgeon, I was so fulfilled because I know God put me there. I know. I'm fulfilled. I'm not just doing work for money. We need to know the purpose of God. Amen? Amen. Therefore, we need to put God's word the first place in our life. Study the word. Number two. Number one, vision or imagination. Number two. I try to go quickly. Number two. Everyone say vision. vision. The, purpose the purpose of God. What God wants to see in my life. I want to see God's purpose for my life. Next one. Why we should put God's word first priority. Proverbs chapter 4. In New King James Version, 
7 to 8. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. In on all you're getting, get understanding. So wisdom is more important than money, more than anything else. Because you can have money and you die soon. But if you have wisdom, you will not die soon. Exalt her wisdom and she will promote you. Wisdom will promote you. She will bring you honor. And when you embrace her, wow. When you study the word of God, the benefit you have in your life is wisdom. Wisdom. The Bible says wisdom is a principle. P-R-I-N-C-I-P-A-L. Principal thing, which means it's a main thing, it's a primary thing, it's a major thing, important thing for you and me. Wisdom is so important. How we can get wisdom? The wisdom come from, it can come to you from different sources, but one source is the word of God. The more you know and understand the word, the more wisdom you have. Number two, come from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will give you wisdom. But the Holy Spirit cannot work with you if you don't know the word of God. You need to know the word of God, and he will give you wisdom. Number three, it comes from the fear of God. I have been a Christian for 40-something years now, and has a pastor for 30-plus years. I see again and again, people, Christians who don't fear God, they make a lot of wrong decisions. They don't have wisdom because they don't fear God. But when you fear God, you have wisdom. Wisdom is supernatural. This is not intellect, not IQ, not diploma that you finish three uh, classes from the school. No, people who can, can have three diploma on the wall and still can be stupid and make wrong decision. No, it's not about intellect. It's not about skill. It's wisdom. You know what is right, what is wrong, what to do, when to do it, who you should talk, talk to, or should you shut your mouth and don't say anything. He gives you wisdom how to handle things in your life. Wisdom is valuable and important. You should value it. More than anything else, Proverbs chapter 3, verses 14 to 16, for her, her mean wisdom, proceeds are better than the profits of silver. Wisdom produce proceed for you, the dividend for you. It will profit you more than silver. And her gain, the gain from wisdom, than fine gold. She, wisdom, wisdom of God, wisdom from above, is more precious than rubies. And all the things you may desire cannot compare with her. Your diamond ring cannot be compared with her. Your Tesla cannot be compared with wisdom. Your um, Hermes purse or Louis Vuitton belt cannot be compared with wisdom. Amen. Your beautiful mansion on the ocean front in Washington area is not as worthy as wisdom. Cannot compare. Length of days. How many people want to live a long life? How many people want to die soon? Length of day is in her right hand. In her left hand, riches and honor. Wow. When you read the Bible, you study the word, you get wisdom. And wisdom gives you long life. Wisdom gives you rich and honor. There's a story in the Bible about a man named Solomon. God came to him after he became a king. God asked Solomon, hey, Solomon, I give you a chance here. Ask me for one thing I'll give to you. Wow. What did Solomon ask? Look at 2 Chronicles chapter 1, verse 10. Now give me wisdom and knowledge that I may go out and come in before these people. For who can judge these great people of yours? Solomon did not ask for a big palace, 
a good job of fame, a reputation and influence and all this stuff on money and gold and rubies. He did not ask for materials and fame and position and reputation. He asked for wisdom. Actually, God granted his request. He was one of the wisest persons in the whole world, in the history. But look at verse 12. After he asked for wisdom, what come with wisdom? Second Chronicle 112. Wisdom and knowledge are granted to you. This is God spoke to him, to Solomon. And I will give you riches and wealth and honor such as none of the kings have had who were before you, nor shall any after you have the like. Wow. Richest man in the world, Solomon, who asked for God's wisdom. God said, okay, I give you wisdom, but I give you also some bonus. Honor, riches, prosperity. What should we seek? Wisdom. And how can we get wisdom? How can, when, when we have wisdom from God, we get God's best that you cannot buy with money. That is the word of God and the Holy Spirit. We should prize, P-R-I-Z-E, price or value the word of God more than anything else in life. We should love the word of God. Practice the word of God. Serious about knowing the word of God and doing what the word of God say. Proverbs chapter 2 verse 6, for the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth come knowledge and understanding. You know, God can speak to you. He, what comes from his mouth is recorded as a book called the Bible. So when you read the Bible, you read what he says. It's a letter to you. It's a personal letter to you. The Bible is the letter from God to you and me personally. And when you read the Bible, the logos, the written word, the Holy Spirit will reveal to you Rhema. It will show you what his wisdom is, understanding and insight. The Holy Spirit will teach you, show you. The wisdom must come from the Bible, not from other books. You cannot trust other books. The wisdom comes from the Bible. That's why we should spend time with the Word of God. God speak to you through the Bible and by the Holy Spirit. Please value the Word of God more than anything else in your life, if you want wisdom. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 6. Forsake not wisdom. This is Amplified Bible. And she will keep and defend and protect you. Love her, love wisdom. And she will guard you. Wow. Wisdom gives us honor, promotion, riches, prosperity, all kinds of things. But not only that, wisdom gives us protection, guarding, keep you, protect you, defend you. We live in this world with the enemies, and the enemies come to kill, to steal, and to destroy. I noticed that since we have a lot of internet, we have a lot of scammers now. The scammer want to steal money from you. Oh, that's so tricky. <laughs> Very tricky. And, and you may face somebody who tricky toward you to get money from you. They come to kill, to steal, and to destroy the devil and bad people. But with the wisdom of God, you can tell. Ah, don't get involved with this. Ah, stay away from this person. God will protect you, guard you. He will show you. You want to buy a house? You walk into a house? You pray, God, give me wisdom. Oh, don't buy this one. You walk into another house? God, wisdom tell you. Oh, this is the right one. God will give you wisdom. But how can you get the wisdom? Fear of God and get into the word of God. So that Satan cannot steal anything from you, kill you and damage you. You need the wisdom. The wisdom will protect. Everyone say, protect. Guard. Keep. Defend. Amen. Amen. God's word will give us the insight, the understanding. So we should always study the Bible. 
James chapter 1 verse 5. I want you to live this way. Okay? Regularly, daily basis, you read the Bible. You meditate on the word. You listen to good biblical teachings. Why I produce so much teaching to the point that people cannot follow, cannot keep up with me. I find out that our teaching not only in YouTube, but they are also in podcasts, iTunes. And if you go to Spotify, you click on podcast in the Spotify and you type New Hope International Church, it will come up in the Spotify too. So you can listen to the teaching everywhere. Why? Because I want you to have wisdom to understand how to live. You need to get into the word of God. And after you get the wisdom, you, you want the wisdom and you face any situation in your life, next step is that you ask God for each particular situation in your life. When my patient talked to me, the symptoms, I did the physical examination, I put the x-ray up or I opened the computer and look at the MRI picture, my antenna go up and I say, God, give me wisdom what is the right treatment for this patient. Surgery or not surgery? Surgery, if God says surgery, next question, what type of surgery? How many level? Oh, by the way, yesterday I was so happy. I took out the uh, young adult to uh, Top Gun Chinese restaurant. Normally, the restaurant would not let us uh, book or make reservation on Saturday. It's so packed. Pastor Da called. And they say, oh no, usually we don't give, but just your voice seems to fa be familiar. You come here often, yes? Okay, we let you book 20 seats. They give us favor. And I walk in to the restaurant. I met a man. He uh, looked good. I think he's about 60 years old. I hug him because he was my patient. And I never forgot that day. He came to emergency room at Evergreen Hospital. He was in bad pain. He cried and he really suffered a lot. He could not even sit up. A lot of bad pain. And I was on call. And when I saw him, oh, you work for, uh, for uh, Top Gun. I, don't, I remember you. And I took him to surgery. Fix it. He became pain free. Yesterday I met him. This is maybe 15 years ago. I met him, we hugged, and he said, my back, perfect, no pain at all. Oh, I was like, oh, God, thank God. <laughs> and after that, he brought us dessert for free, both tables. <laughs> I even remember that when the bill go to him, he need to pay some percentage because the, when you have health insurance, you have to pay some. Deductible, pay deductible. I wrote it off for him. I told him, I don't charge you. I do this for you for free. And after that, when I went to Top Gun, he always like, oh, nice to meet you. <laughs> Praise God. You ask for wisdom for your finances. Ask for wisdom for parenting, for marriage, for ministry, for your industry, your work, your business. Everything you ask wisdom. James chapter 1 verse 5. If anything of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who give to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. When you need wisdom, you ask God. But in the preparation time to ask God what you need to do, read the Bible, study the word of God, listen to good teaching. Why? Let me read scripture to you. In the book of John chapter 15 verse 7. If you abide in me, which means you spend time with God, you're close to God, and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire. Blank check. Do you like somebody to give you blank check with signature? Yes. David, could you give me blank check with your signature? I can put the number in two millions blank check you will ask what you desire it shall be done for you the key 
to receive God's answer all the time. Anything you ask except sin. You ask anything, including wisdom, is that you abide with Jesus, have a relationship with Jesus, and the word abide in you, and you practice what you learn from the Bible. And if you can do that, anything, you can ask God, including wisdom. This is a promise of God. And we should invest our time, our life, our energy into the word. And you're gonna get good dividends. You're gonna get good return, good benefits and profits. Everyone say, I invest invest. my life, my my time time. in in the word, obeying the word. Meditate on the word. I will get a good dividends. It may not come overnight. It may take a few days, a few years. I will get profits. Amen. Everyone say good return. God's best. Now I would like to give you some practical point here. It's so wonderful to learn that when you get into the word, you get courage, you get faith, you get vision, you get v. Uh, the wisdom from God. But the hardest part to do is to get started. It's hard. Your life will not change overnight, but it has to start one night. It will not change overnight, but you have to start one night. What I'd like to encourage you, don't procrastinate. Quit procrastinating. Our life, Life is choice. Life is time. All of us have only 24 hours a day. Life is composed of minutes, hours, days, weeks, months, and years. And you have limitation. One day, they will be gone. One day, we will die. Those time on earth are limited. If you keep procrastinating, You're gonna waste your days, your hours, your months and days and years away. Then you cannot get God's best because you keep wasting. Make a decision from now on. You're gonna make the right investment of your time, your days, your minutes, your hours into good things here, the word of God. And you're gonna get some profits and dividends and your life is going to be full of God's best. You allow God's word to reign over your life. You're going to do what God say. Let me give you three practical points here. I know we all have 24 hours a day. We cannot add more than 24, I'm sorry. We cannot have more than 24 hours a day. Except one time when God added in for uh, Joshua. When he prayed that, God, could you stop the sun from moving? So God give him more hours that day. But otherwise, we have only 24 hours a day. Number one, wake up every morning. You have two choices. While you are brushing your teeth, getting dressed, or you are preparing, you check your email or something, you have two choices. You listen to bad news in the world, or you get into some nonsensical social media that will not do anything good to you. And you keep spending time in the bad news and the social media that are not helping you. You will waste your time. You have only 24 hours a day. Don't waste your time on bad news. I learned something in my life that bad news do not help me at all. No help. Rather, you spend time in the Word. Maybe turn on Spotify or uh, 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 podcast or YouTube. When you drive your car, don't waste your time. Listen to the good teaching. Amen? Listen to the good teaching. I don't know why the lights disappear. (laughs) Something happened. Okay, thank you. Because I cannot see here. (laughs) Okay. You make sure you 
can do, you can eat food and listen to sermon at the same time. Yesterday, uh, this happened to many people in the world. Sometimes people contact me and say, "Oh, my daughter, my son, get into trouble right now. They become crazy." I say, "Turn on the sermon loud in your house, and alternate with worship song to bring the presence of God into your house." And the daughter got healed. Amen. Don't just use the ear part. What do you call the airport? Something. Okay. Turn it loud in your house. Everyone can hear the word and bring the presence of God there. Okay, that's number one. Number two, when you have a chance every single day, meditate on one word. Maybe if you struggle with finances, meditate on the word regarding finances. Meditate on the word regarding health, healing. Meditate on it. Keep talking about it. Keep thinking about it. Meditating on it. Number three, read the Bible every day. Maybe at least one chapter a day. Read and study the Bible every day, and you're gonna get great return after 365 days a year. Every day, get into the Word, listening, reading, meditating, and when God show you something, make decision. I gotta obey. I gotta do it. Don't argue, don't give excuses, don't try to use human reasoning. Actually, I'm preparing a sermon. I'm going to share quickly. I shared last night with the Vietnamese group. I'm, I'm writing a sermon not done yet. The title of the sermon is called, Just Obey. One man in the Bible, his name is Naaman, N-A-A-M-A-N. He is a uh, commander of Syria army, very big guy, big kahuna, and he got leprosy. And hopeless case, he wouldn't be in trouble. Leprosy, no treatment, no cure in that generation. And his servant girl, Jewish girl, Hebrew girl, this is a girl, young age. Hey, master, uh, she even served his wife not his direct servant. Master, why don't you go to see Elisha? He is a prophet in Israel. The man was desperate, so he, went, he traveled to house, the house of Elisha. He knocked the door. <laughs> Elisha did not come out. Elisha sent servant to talk to Naaman, the big kahuna. Uh, go down, dip yourself in the Jordan River seven times. What? He was so offended. He was so mad. I am a general from a big country named Syria. You should come to the door, greet me, take me in to, and give me some Coke to drink. <laughs> and give me some nice seat to sit and wave your hand and pray for me and <laughs> But you just send your servant to talk to this general. Wow, he was so offended he wanted to walk back and go home. The servant girl say, stop, stop, master. You need healing, okay? Calm down. He did not have faith. He was offended. He was mad. He was criticizing. He was so upset with Elisha. Well, be careful. Sometimes your pastor may offend you. And what you're going to choose? You're going to get mad at your pastor or you're going to obey. The man woke up and he dipped himself in the Jordan River. First time he came up, nothing happened. Second time, come up, nothing happened. Oh, he even said this, the, the water in the Jordan River is dirty compared to the river in Syria. Beautiful. Why you ask me to dump myself in this dirty water? He was mad. He was so offended. I'm gonna come up with a sermon soon in a few Sundays about offense. You should not take offense. Okay. I believe the third time he say, wow, this is a stupid thing. Dump myself in the dirty water three times, no healing. But he keep going. By the seventh time he come up, he got totally healed. His skin became like a baby skin. Why? Just obey. 
day. Study the Bible and obey the Bible. And you will see the miracle. So God taught me in this sermon. Uh, I'm, I'm still writing, not done yet. In this sermon that sometimes people may not have faith to ask for miracle. In the name of Jesus, my cold, my running nose is going to go away right now. But you don't have that faith. But one solution for your life to get the miracle is just obey. Even though you don't have faith, even though there's no good reason, just obey the Bible. That's what happened to me. When I first became a new Christian, I read the Bible, give tithe to God. I said, no way, tithe? Pastor Da's salary is equal to my 10%. If I give tithe to church, it means she work for free. I try to reasoning. And God say, just obey. After I obey, I don't use reasoning anymore. God opened the door. My, my clinic income go triple. And then God opened the door for me to come to Seattle to be trained at University of Washington. That looked impossible in that generation because the Vietnam War just stopped. So all the American soldiers came back to America, took over all the hospitals. They would not take foreigners like me. But just obey. And at that time, I didn't even have faith to give 10%. I was even complaining why I need to give the church 10%, which is Pasadena's salary. Not, not reasonable. Just obey. Amen? Amen. Everyone say, God's word comes first. Word come first. I, will have courage. I will have courage. I will have faith. I will have, faith. I have a clear vision the purpose of God for my life. I will have wisdom more valuable than gold and silver. And wisdom shall protect me, guard me, keep me, defend me. Wisdom will give me promotion, honor, riches, wealth, success, God's best. God's best. Amen. Amen. Will New Hope International Church take serious about the word of God? Yes. Amen. <laughs> wow. I love this teaching. It's so important for all of us. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord. You teach us the truth in the word. How we can receive the best from you. Lord, we promise you we're going to do our part. We can uh, sow or invest our time and life in the right thing so that we can reap the good things. We can reap the best from you. Lord, help all of us in this church to really understand the big purpose of God for the whole world. That is salvation and maturity. And each one of us will discover our own purpose that come from you so that Romans chapter 8 verse 28 shall be fulfilled that in all things God will work out for good to those who love you and live according to your purpose Lord all of us will not live day by day just for the paycheck just for the oxygen to breathe just to have a nice house and vacation but we will discover your purpose for our life Lord, we need your wisdom, the wisdom from above. We ask you, Lord, every day, every moment, every situation in our life, in every area, parenting, uh, marriage, relationship, business, work, serving God, driving, talking to the boss, talking to the employees, and talking to the customer, Lord dealing with the situation in life we ask for your wisdom supernatural wisdom from you lord what we promise you we're going to spend time we're going to give priority to your word lord thank you so much lord for your faithfulness you keep your promise in jesus name let us confess together father in heaven 
I love you. You sent your son Jesus Christ to die for me. Lord Jesus, I loved you. I will obey you. I repent of my sin. I will walk in humility. I will not think that I'm smart, but I need your wisdom. Lord, help me. Save me. I will follow you. I will read your word. May your Holy Spirit speak to me every day. Guide me. Show me what to say, what to do. Thank you, Lord. My name is recorded in the book of life. One day, I will live for eternity in heaven. Lord Jesus, sit on the throne of my life. Become my King, my Lord, and my Savior. In Your name, Jesus, I pray. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you so much for listening to this whole teaching, and I believe that the promise of God in the book of Philippians, chapter one, verse six. Shall be fulfilled in your life. The Bible says, "Being confident of this very thing, that He who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ." You shall obey the teaching of the Word of God. You shall be blessed, and you shall do the right thing, and you will be in heaven with great reward and great mansion because. God is working in you, and you respond to Him. God bless you. I hope you come and listen to other teachings in this series and other series as well. And don't forget to put the thumb up for us. Thank you so much. God bless you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I command that you are healed from sickness and disease. In the name of Jesus Christ, your curses are broken, and you are free from the bondage. And you will be filled with the blessing of Abraham that will overtake you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command that the poverty have to leave you, and God's blessing come upon you. May the Lord shower into your life His grace, His blessing, His joy, His faith, His goodness, His favor, and you shall know the Lord your God in the intimate way. You will be the people of faith that the Lord will answer your prayer, and God will get all the glory. I command that the mountain in your life must be made flat. Shall have supernatural breakthroughs in your life. The provision, the healing, the victory of the kingdom of God shall follow you, and you shall be His witness in this generation. May the Lord bless you in the name of Jehovah. Amen.